stairs, and one side says guess, the other side says response. And if you would take that side that says guess, fill that out for us. And just a moment when we do our tithes and offerings, you can come and you can drop that off in the offering basket. It's kind of our custom is here. Can we give our guests a big hand in Counter Church? Come on. Hallelujah. God is doing some awesome stuff. I tell you, the storehouse ministry just went fabulous yesterday. Appreciate all the team that helped serve there. And, you know, I had something happen that I've not experienced. I know we have different guys that go back and minister to the people that come through. And something that may be a little bit unique about us, we don't believe it's enough to give somebody some food. I mean, a can of corn will sustain you for a meal, but it ain't going to help you for eternity. We thank God for the opportunity to give out. Appreciate Chris and the team and everybody that does that. But one of the dynamics that we have here, we have an area where people come in and we share the Word, whatever's on our heart. Many different ones share. And uh, it's just always been powerful. Always, Almost every week we see somebody born again. And we saw a number of people saved yesterday. Amen. And that's awesome. I know that's the greatest miracle. But in addition to that, in our first group, we had, and this is conservative figure because a lady had come to me and said, now this is conservative. We had over 35 people that testified that God touched them in their body and they were healed. 35. I mean, some of these ladies waving both hands and shout. It's been awesome to see what God's doing. And we commend the faithfulness of our Father. How I many know He's faithful to perform everything He has promised? Amen. I want Megan and Denise, if you would come, and maybe Pastor Ronnie and kind of represent the house here. Uh, Denise and I will be going uh, to El Salvador with Megan. And also my daughter Hannah is going to be meeting up with us in Atlanta. And uh, we're going to be going to El Salvador. Y'all come on, don't be bashful, baby. Come up here. You make me look a lot better. Hallelujah. Amen. I ain't got no six-inch heels on now. If I did like that, I'd... Okay. But anyway, um, we'll be heading off to El Salvador, and they got our team ministering uh, over 20 times in uh, a few days there. And uh, it's a great opportunity uh, for us. Everybody say us. Us to go to the nations. Because I want you to understand, if you're part of this house, when we go, you're going. Let me try that again. I said, if you're part of this house, when we go, you're going. Amen. I know some of you have been to El Salvador and helped us with some of these uh, things. We'll have uh, crusades that we'll be doing, evangelistic miracle healing crusades. We'll be ministering to pastors and leaders. We'll be going into orphanages and ministering there. And some days we'll be ministering. The team will be ministering as many as five services a day. I told the brothers, y'all going to have to give us one day off in Jesus' name. But it's going to be a great time. Megan and my daughter Hannah are going to be ministering as well. And so we're excited about the team. But Pastor Ron, if you come, I want you guys to stretch your hands out toward us and pray. Now, Megan's going to be staying a little bit later. Uh, we'll be there for a period of time. And I think Hannah's going to be staying a little later as well. And so they're going to, uh, a little longer, I should say, not later, a little longer uh, when we come back. And uh, I trust my father with my spiritual daughter and my natural daughter. Amen. And I know Father's going to take you. But I want you all to cover us in prayer. Because, you know, I, I don't just go on a mission field. I really believe that when God opens up doors and we get that confirmation to go, I believe God sends us. And I believe part of that sending is being sent by local house. And uh, you're going to send us today. And I want you to just be praying for us throughout the next several days. We'll be leaving Tuesday, actually, and uh, be coming back on the Thursday. So just keep us before the Lord. Stretch your hands out towards us. And I want you, Pastor Ron, if you would, just cover us in prayer and lead, lead us, lead, lead the congregation as they pray over us and send us. Come on. Let's just stand if you can. If you're able physically to stand, stretch your hands this way. We're, we're never weakened by sending teams. Uh, whether it's locally or abroad. And God has uh, used this church, this ministry, mightily to impact the nations of the world, and specifically El Salvador. And so we're going to be strengthened as we send them and bless them. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for God, this mighty man of God, and these mighty women of God as they go on this mission trip. We know that you have opened doors, Lord, that there's favor in El Salvador. We know, Lord, that the hand of God is going to use them and the power of God is going to flow through them. And I pray, God, that you would sustain their bodies with physical strength. I thank you for protection and 
lights and everything and every transition. I thank you, Lord, that the hand of God is going to use them and souls. Lord, that they're, they're going to impact the pastors and wives and leaders of the churches. Children, whatever they do, God, that your hand is on them and you're going to use them. Thank you for this church, for being a sending church. Thank you for our pastors for having this vision. Thank you, Lord, for Megan and Hannah. God, young people that are on fire for you and ready to go and to be plugged in to what you're all about. We thank you for it. Let's pastors join Denise, God, and just give them supernatural favor in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 One, one of the things that, uh, well, one of the areas that we support, we, we support about uh, five ministries uh, there in El Salvador. And I'm not going to go into all of them, but we support them on a monthly basis and not just there in other parts of the world, of course. And it comes through your faithful giving here. But one of the areas that we minister at is the teen center in uh, Pastor Rogelio from uh, Lourdes. And you know Rogelio and Blanca, he's ministered here. Powerful man of God. But they have a ministry there out of their church. And it's basically a teen center. And what it does is it's a, a venue for people on the street, mainly kids, that normally would gravitate toward gangs. It's a place for them to go and they learn a craft. They have a, a kitchen. They have a computer area. They have an area where they have musical instruments and they teach them something rather than them getting plugged into a gang in El Salvador. And one of the things that Megan and uh, Hannah will be doing is teaching them how to uh, take water balloons and put them on flip-flops. Now, I know that may be a lot of things pop in your mind there, but anyway... They look good because I've seen what they do. but uh, And I think we put in the attenders guide where you can sew into that. So if you want to designate anything toward uh, El Salvador in that regard, just be sure and put that on your offering envelope and it will go straight to that particular ministry. Amen. Are you glad you're here? All right. How y'all doing again? All right. If you will stand on your feet, we want to prepare our hearts to give and to sow into the kingdom today. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. Thank you so much for obeying God and really reflecting to the Lord how much you love Him through your giving. Isn't it a blessing to be able to give to God? Amen. Praise God. I want to just put our confession up. Just hold your tithes and offerings up. Let's say it together. As we sow today's offering, we believe the Lord for salvations in our families and our communities, deliverance and healing in our soul and body, and revival in the land. Jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank You, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give to the Kingdom of God and promote the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, I just thank You for the faithfulness of Your people, God, to give unto You, Lord. God, I thank You, Father, as we reflect that love that You first loved us in our giving. It's one of the ways we do that, God. I thank You for blessing us in every area, God, even the confession that we've made today. I thank You for meeting people's needs according to Your riches and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. If you would...
man. Amen. Appreciate these guys. Appreciate the gifts they are. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's Pentecost Sunday. I tell you, I'm glad I'm in a Pentecostal church. We got runners here. I'm glad I'm in a Pentecostal church. Amen. So this is a special time. Come on, when you're that element of the body of Christ and you believe in Pentecost. I'm glad Pentecost was not just an experience to birth in the church. I'm glad that all through the dispensations of history, God has made Pentecost available to everybody. Can you say amen? How many thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Do we have any Holy Ghost filled, baptized, on fire, spirit filled, overflowing, Pentecostal, tongue talking believers in the house that aren't ashamed to magnify the Lord with everything He's given us? Hallelujah! Come on, you ought to go ahead and just give Him a high praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your power, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 If you will, the rest of you stand on your feet, please. I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo! Hallelujah! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah this morning. Take your Bibles out. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Your praise ain't going to bother me. I said your praise ain't going to bother me. Your shout is not going to bother me. Woo! Hallelujah. 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 What's this? Woo! Y'all stay with me, guys. Acts chapter 2. When? Everybody say when. <laughs> Can you remember... When you encountered your Pentecost, can you remember when you had a head on collision with the Holy Ghost that so radicalized your life that you've never been the same since you had an encounter? With this third person of the Trinity by the name of the Holy Ghost. When? I can remember when, as a Southern Baptist boy in a Southern Baptist church, November the 5th, 1985, under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, Walked down the aisles of a church and kneeled before God and said, God, if you could do anything with my life, here I am. And God came down and birthed me into the kingdom. Then I can remember the evangelist 
Come in and get me from the altar. It's not enough to just go to the altar. Go to the altar and get you in heaven. But listen, the power of the Holy Ghost will give you authority to live a victorious life here on earth before you get to heaven. They called me up on an altar and began to lay hands on me. And as they laid hands on me in my dad's Southern Baptist Church, I felt this power begin to flow through my body. And all I can explain it felt like, and I ain't never felt 440, don't want to feel 440 votes, but all I know is I felt something felt like a great amount of voltage, amperage, flow through my body, and I felt that power of the Holy Spirit come down, and then begin to come back up, and out of my mouth, I begin to Hallelujah! And I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. My wife is my witness. When I got baptized, now when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost and I got born again, now I walked into the church that night bound by drugs, bound by alcohol, bound by pornography, bound by a whole bunch of stuff. I went into the building that way. I met Jesus, became born again. Then I was caught up on a platform and the evangelist took off his coat and put it on me and began to pray for me. And I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I hadn't been the same since. Some of people have wondered, when's he going to settle down? I don't ever settle down. I don't want to ever get lukewarm. I don't want to ever get so religious minded that I sit down. I want to be on fire more now than I ever have been all the days of my life. Hallelujah. That night I was delivered drugs, alcohol, pornography, religion. Bam, 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 bam. See, it ain't enough to get set free from something. You've got to get full of something. When you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes in. You're regenerated. But there's a lot of difference in having a drink of the Spirit and getting submerged or baptized in it. There in my dad's son of Baptist church, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I love what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 3 and 11. John the Baptist speaking, he said, Listen, there's one coming after me that's mightier than I am, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And I was baptized. I remember when I was baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, this is the good news God is no respecter of persons. I said, this is the good news. God is no respecter of persons. He wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and prophesy to you. There's some of you ain't going to leave this building today until you Shabbat him before you leave out. I, I'm going to go ahead and prophesy. And some of you that you've just been praying, how am I going to get the Holy Ghost? You've been trying to do all these different methods. You try to do it the Pentecostal way, the, the, the holiness way. You try to do it all these other ways rather than just simply by faith receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost and getting filled with His power. When? Okay, I'm getting through the Scripture. The day of Pentecost had fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly... (laughs) And suddenly, there came a sound... Not from earth, from heaven. As a rushing, mighty wind. One of the translations says, a gale force wind. The sound. Hmm. How many know sound precedes manifestation? Before you ever see a train, you hear a train. Come on, somebody. Before you ever see a car coming down the road, when you stand out in your front yard, you first hear the car. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared unto them divers or divided tongues. So I didn't even know that was in the Bible. 
I kind of thought that devil folk spoke in tongues. But I couldn't ever understand when I was in the bar, they wasn't going, Shana Mama Mashita Dedekeshe. Because I thought, surely if devils was manifesting anywhere, it was in the nightclub. Come on, y'all don't look at me sideways. And one sat upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, I feel they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. Everybody say they began to speak. You know, when you got baptized in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost didn't get up in your mouth and move your tongue around. You had to begin to speak. When you got born again, you began to pray and got born again. They began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. Father, I thank You, mighty God, for Your great love, Father. Thank You for loving us beyond ourselves. Thank You for demonstrating that great love toward us. That You would call us Your sons and daughters. That You would adopt us into your family, that your love is so amazing that we can't even find words in the English language to accurately describe the love that you have for us, Father. God, that love of just creating us and allowing us to live on this planet would have been enough. But God, you loved us so much that you provided a venue that we could live here on earth with you, God. That we could experience you on this planet and experience your great love. God, I thank You for the body of Christ. I thank You for every element of the body of Christ. I thank You for our Baptist brothers. I thank You for New Harvest right up the road here and the Church of God, the Assemblies of God, the Presbyterian, the Lutheran God, the Methodist God, the Baptist Associations, Lord, the different churches that are part of the body of Christ. And I pray Your blessings over each one of them. Let every one of the churches, Charismatic, Pentecostal, Baptist, Methodist, all the way down the line that name Your name, let us all have a fresh encounter with Pentecost this morning. Breathe on us. Let your mighty wind blow once again. God, Pentecost needs a refreshing. Pentecostal charismatic people need a refreshing from you, God. Breathe on us afresh. Lord, I thank you in advance what, what you're going to do. I ask you, oh God, put me on like a coat and wear me. God, let your word come forth through me. Such a measure, God, with such revelation that it ministers right to everyone that's here within the sound of my voice. Those that are watching by the internet, God. Those that will get a CD. I thank you, Holy Ghost. You go down into time and you know, God, who's going to hear this Word. And I thank you, Father, for speaking through me. And we'll give you the glory, the honor, the praise. I'm dependent upon you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I tell you, I had a message that I was wanting to begin to embark on. And, and the Holy Ghost actually... Uh, had a dear brother send me a text last night. I said, Pastor, now remember tomorrow is Pentecost Sunday. And I said, man, i got a word burning in me. And I, but you know what? When I began to prepare, and I just, just this morning, the Spirit of God just really began to speak to me. And He said, I want you to minister on Pentecost. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are in Pentecostal charismatic churches but have not yet encountered Pentecost. Now, to encounter Pentecost means you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost that radically transforms you. Now, you and I both know people that are born again, but you can't tell a lot of difference in some people that are born again than people in the world. But on the other hand, when somebody's really been induced or immersed in the Spirit of God, there is a difference. Matter of fact, most of the people that you find that are pretty radical usually are Holy Ghost-filled people. Most of the people that shout usually are Holy Ghost people. Most of the people that can put their praise on are usually Holy Ghost filled people. And so when we look at Pentecost, now, in the history of Israel, they had seven feast days, but three proceeded above the other seven. There were three main feast days. It was the, the Feast of Passover, and we know that's symbolic of the coming out of Egypt of the children of Israel. How many glad God brought you out? That is a picture of our salvation. And then after Pentecost, there's the feast of, excuse me, after, after Passover, there's the feast of Pentecost. 
And that celebrates the budding of the harvest season. And it was another feast day. And we know that, that celebrates what you and I have encountered. Those of us that have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. It reflects the baptism that you and I experience. And then the third, of course, is the Feast of Tabernacles or Feast of Booths which speaks prophetically of Jesus that's coming back, the ingathering. How many are thankful that we serve a God that's coming back soon? Hallelujah. I want to share some things about Pentecost to you today because I believe it's so important that we as Pentecostal people receive Pentecost. Not just one time. See, sometimes we think Pentecost is an event that just happens once in a lifetime. But when we study the book of Acts, we discover that they were filled with the Spirit over and over and over again. The same ones that were here in Acts chapter 2, when the 120 were gathered, and, 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 and let me help you with something. There were men, women, and children. I said there were men, women, and children. There were men, women, and children. There were 120 in that upper room. And the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Everybody say they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And this this is, if I could title this message, this is what I would call it, The Day God Moved In. The Day God Moved In. In the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, God would visit people periodically. The Spirit of God would come upon Samson. He'd do amazing feats under the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the Lord would come upon David. He would slay lions and bears and Goliaths. The Spirit of the Lord would come upon Deborah and she would dance and lead Israel, or Miriam, and she would lead Israel in a dance. The Spirit of the Lord would come upon different prophets and they would prophesy. But one thing you do not find under the Old Covenant, the Spirit of God stained in someone. He would visit different people for specific purposes. But here at Pentecost, we find something different. Of course, this is the season after Jesus was crucified and He was buried and He was resurrected and He instructs His disciples after He had breathed upon them and said, Receive you the Holy Spirit. And they were born again. Then He instructs them, You go to Jerusalem and you tarry. And the Bible says in Acts 1.8, You wait for the promise of the Father. Somebody shout, The promise of the Father. The Holy Ghost is the promise of the Father. Can I tell you, we need more than the Holy Spirit coming and regenerating us. We need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is a promise. Now, it's one thing for somebody in human flesh to promise you, I'm going to do this or that. It's one thing for your mother to say, I promise this, or your father. We can all say that we've had human beings break their promise. In other words, they tell us one thing and do something else. But it's a whole different deal when your father says, I'm going to promise you something. It was the promise of the Father. God moved in. God moved in. You know, my, as I was preparing for this, my mind went back to, I remember when Denise and I got our first home. And we were so excited. And as a couple been married a few years, and we had, uh, I just got born again November the 5th. And November the 7th, the gentleman that we were renting a home from, called us up to his house, not knowing anything had happened in our lives. Didn't know I'd got born again. Didn't know that I'd got baptized in the Holy Ghost. But he just called me up to his house. And we had asked him about buying the home that we were presently living in, but it was his home place. And so he didn't want to sell that. And so he calls me up on November the 7th, two days after I was saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he calls me up to his house and he says, uh, Joey, listen, I know you want to buy this house. I'm not interested in selling. It's my home place. But I got this other little house down here. And it was about, it was a, about a 995 square foot little house. And it had five acres of land with it. And he said, listen, if you're interested in that house, you look at it. And uh, it, this was 1987. Uh, yeah, it was 1987. He said, you look at this house. If you're interested in this house, you go ahead and remodel it because it needs to be renovated on the inside. You remodel it and we'll set your payments up for January 1989. 
So in February, we were in the house. We moved into the house, renovated it, and it was, man, it was, you know, when you get, for those of you, you know, when you get your first house or, you know, it's got your name on the deed. Come on, somebody. It would have mattered, and listen, it would have mattered if it wasn't but 200 square foot. It, it, was, it was ours in, in a respect. And, and so I remember that, and we moved in, and then uh, years later, on the back part of our property, my grandfather and I decided, actually about 20 years ago from now, we decided we would build another house, and we kind of outgrown. You know, when you get three kids and 995 square foot, you know, things can happen. That's all we need to see there. And so we made a decision. My grandfather and I, we built a house on the back part of our property, moved in there. That's where we live at to this day. Been there for over 20 years. And we, when we made that transition to move out of the little 90, 995 square foot house into a house with a carport and everything, like 2,100 square foot, what amazed me was the stuff that we had in the little house. I mean, no, you don't know what you got until you start moving. Come on, hang with me. I'm going somewhere. You don't really know all you got until you start opening up the attic. Start going in the back part of the closets. I know most of the time we just deal with the front part, but I'm talking about in the back part of the closets. And then you start looking up under the house, and you find out, and then your storage building, and you find out where in the world did all this stuff come from. There's no way it could have been in that little house. Come on, can anybody testify what I'm talking about? And so we didn't realize what all came and what all we had in the house. But when we moved, we took everything that belonged to us from one location into another location. In other words, when we moved into our new place, we took everything that was ours with us. What happened at Pentecost is the Holy Ghost moved into your temple. The Spirit of God came on the inside of you as a believer. And guess what? He didn't leave anything behind. He brought everything that He has. Jesus said this, It's expedient, it's necessary for me to go away. Because if I don't go away, I can't send the Comforter to you. But if I go away, He's going to come to you. And when the Holy Ghost comes, He's going to bring everything that He has with Him. Hallelujah! Several things that moved into us. See, I don't believe we're fully aware of what's on the inside of us. Touch your neighbor and tell them you are loaded. Go ahead and tell them you got a package. Acts 1 and 8 says, After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. First thing I want you to realize at Pentecost, and when you encounter Pentecost, you opened yourself up, first of all, for the power of God. That word power is the word dudamus. It literally means miracle working power. Now you thought, well, Benny has that. Benny Hinn. But the reality is every believer has the same power. Can I say it like this? I heard Ron Habaki say it this way one time. You are like a nuclear power station. We have some power on the inside of us. We got power to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. We got power to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. We got power to see the dead raised up. We got power to see leopards cleansed. We got power to see demon oppressed people totally liberated. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Touch your neighbor and say, there's more in me that meets the eye. Go ahead and tell them, you're looking at a power station. (laughs) When you go in your house, rarely do you think about Cliffside Power Plant. You just flip the switch. The reality is we have the power of God on the inside of us through the Holy Ghost, and we rarely acknowledge it. Can I tell you, when God came down, He moved in, and everything of Him by the Spirit of grace and by the Spirit of God moved on the inside of us. 
That's why Mark chapter 16 says that we can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. These signs shall follow them that believe. How many people have you prayed for to be healed this week? How many people have you cast devils out of this week? See, sometimes we have come and gravitated to the mindset that this Christian thing is something we do on Sunday and something we do on Wednesday. No, walking with God is a lifestyle. The Holy Ghost doesn't move in you on Sunday morning and move out at 1 o'clock on, on, excuse me, on Sunday afternoon. And move back in on... Oh, help me here, Holy Ghost. And move back in... No, no. He came to stay. He brought His furniture with Him. Glory to God. Woo! He brought everything that we need with Him. That's why the Bible says you were complete in Christ. Didn't say Jesus. We're complete in Christ. The anointing, the anointed one. It's Christ in us. The anointing, the anointed one, the Holy Spirit. It's Christ in us. The hope of glory. Somebody shout, we got power. Listen. I've said this before, and the Lord just really challenged my thinking about this. I've said this before. When Jesus came, being the last Adam, came to restore us back to the place of the first Adam. But you know what? God began to show me something. God didn't restore us back to the state of the first Adam. God made it better. Because God, watch this, because God would walk with Adam in the cool of the day. But there would be times that His presence would depart from Adam. Because the Bible says He come back looking for Adam. Where are you, Adam? Adam, where art thou? When God came to manifest Himself to walk back with Adam, He wanted to manifest Himself and walk back with Adam and Eve again. That tells us that the Spirit of God would come and leave the Garden of Eden. But we've been baptized with the Holy Ghost. He is Emmanuel. The Bible says that He will never leave us, nor will He forsake us. So I submit to you, we are better than the state Adam was in. Because Adam encountered His presence periodically. We have the presence of the Holy Ghost dwelling on the inside of us. Everywhere we go, we carry the Holy Ghost. When you go to sleep tonight, the Holy Spirit is in you. When you wake up in the morning, the Holy Spirit is in you. You didn't come to church. You are the church. You didn't come say, Spirit of God, come. The Spirit of God has already come. He is in you. You brought Him. It's another thing that took place at Pentecost. Not only was there release of this power through the Holy Ghost, we have power. Even though the devil can make you think that there's other people that have greater anointings than you. And I understand different giftings. I'm not talking about gifting. I'm talking about the presence of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm talking about the power of God that causes every demon in hell to shudder in fear. I'm talking about the power of God that can cause a wheelchair to empty out. I'm talking about the power of God that can cause a blind eye to see. I'm talking about the power of God that can cause a deaf ear to hear. I'm talking about the power of God when the doctor looks at you and says you got cancer, you say no. I don't in the name of Jesus. I'm talking about the power of God when the when the doctors come in and say you've had an aneurysm and you're not going to make it through the night and you boldly declare like Carton did for his wife Tamara, she shall live and not die and declare the works of God. It is not reserved for just the fivefold ministry gift, the pastor, teacher, prophet, apostle, and evangelist. It is reserved for the church, the body of Christ. We have the power of the Holy Ghost in us. Glory to the King. I got to hurry. Everybody say the power of the Holy Ghost has moved in. Hallelujah. Now, whether you acknowledge His presence or not does not negate the fact that He's moved in. Whether you submit to the power of the Holy Spirit or not does not negate the that the power is available. Come on. Just because you don't flip your light switch does not mean that there's electricity, that that electricity has not been run to your switch. It's coming from the power plant. Brother Rick could tell you, the plant is making power. Come on, somebody. 
The plant is generating electricity. What stops is us flipping the switch. And the fact is, we tried to shut the Holy Ghost off. Listen, if you're in the grocery store, if you're, in, I was, man, I went to get, a few days ago, I went to get a flat changed, and it wasn't all the way flat, thank you, Jesus. It was just running low, and I saw a screw, and it needed a plug, and I went to the place to get my tire plugged. And you know what? God opened up an opportunity, and a brother told me, well, I ain't, you know, I just, you know, and the guy just started opening his heart and said, I'm not feeling good, and I laid hands on him right there at the tire store. See, this thing about the Holy Spirit, listen, we can yield to the Holy Ghost in every dimension of our life. When you're at school, don't keep the switch off. When you're at work, don't keep the switch off. Sometimes we think we can just turn Him on and turn Him off. He is available 24-7. He's moved in. He's living in us, that power. Let me thank God for the Holy Ghost. Not only the power of God moved in, but the presence of the Holy Ghost. Do you feel Him all the time? I don't feel Him all the time, but I don't walk by feelings. I walk by faith. I walk by what the Word of God says. I don't judge my situation. I don't judge my emotions. I shouldn't judge my emotions by what I think or what I feel. I have to judge things, and we have to judge things by what the Word says. If the Word said the Holy Ghost moved in me, I don't care what hell's trying to tell me. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I sinned. Can I tell you, the Holy Ghost probably still hadn't left you. If you repent of that sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Holy Ghost is in us. He is there. He came to bring power. There's another thing. The Bible says the rushing mighty wind. Everybody say the wind. You don't know where the wind's coming from. You don't know where it's going. But you say, well, I don't believe in God. How can I believe in a God that I don't see? Well, do you believe in the wind? Yeah. Well, you don't see it. You just see the effects of it. That's rushing mighty wind He came in. This is the second thing. The presence of the Holy Ghost came in here. Can I tell you, God wants to, God wants to have a good time living in your body. <laughs> I think I heard Bishop Miller say this. I think it was Bishop Miller. He made this statement. He said, he said, when I get to heaven, I want the Holy Ghost to tell me I had a good time living in Tony's body. I had a good time. Me and you had a blast, man. You see, sometimes we categorize ourselves and we think, well, this makes us qualified. That, that if you're born again and you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're qualified. Sometimes we're trying to do a bunch of stuff to just gain God's approval so we can get anointed, not realizing we're already anointed. Sometimes we're trying to work to get the Holy Ghost when we already got the Holy Ghost. We just need to let turn the switch on and let the current flow through us. The presence of the Holy Ghost moved in. Not only the power, but the presence. Well, time's running out. You can see this Scripture. Verse 19 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have from God. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Everything we are belongs to God. Our spirit, our soul, and our body. What's this? When the Holy Ghost moved in, He signed the deed. His deed, His name rather, is on the deed of our lives. We're bought with a price. When the Holy Ghost moved in, listen, He moved in signifying that He took ownership. We belong to God. He is in us and we are His. We are not free to live our own lives. Can I tell you the greatest life you'll ever live is the life you live with the Holy Ghost. It is fun. It's fun to lay hands on people at tire stores and see them get healed. It's fun to see people come to a food drive and get healed and get saved and get delivered. It's fun to see God touch people's lives and change them. You have the same Holy Ghost Benny Hinn has. You have the same Holy Ghost T.D. Jake has. You have the same Holy Spirit Pastor Joey has or Pastor Tim or Pastor Roddy or any other believer. The presence of God came on the inside. It's another thing that moved in. Not only did the power of the Holy Ghost, not only did the presence of the Holy Ghost, there's another thing. Everybody say the gifts. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12. I don't want to get into all of them, but it talks about 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 4, it says, There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of ministry, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation... How many know God wants to manifest Himself? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one, the profit of all. Every gift that God gives you to operate in is for the profit of the kingdom. How many know God doesn't want to heal people through you so you can get boastful? God doesn't want you to use your gifts so you can get lifted up in pride thinking you're something more than somebody else. When the reality is the only thing that makes us anything is the content, not the container. So it don't make no, what's this? It doesn't make, make no difference if I'm three foot tall or seven foot eight tall. It doesn't matter if I'm narrow or if I'm a little wide. It doesn't matter what the color of my skin is. It's not about the container. It's about the content. And when you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, you have the content of the Spirit of God on the inside of you. And with Him, He moved in with His power. He moved in with His presence. And He moved in with His gifts. In this passage of Scripture, says one's given this gift and one's given that gift. If you look at the interpretation the way I see that, there are times that these different nine gifts, everybody say the nine gifts. When the Holy Ghost moved in, He moved in with His power, He moved in with His presence, and He moved in with His gifts. Everybody say total package. When you receive the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, I'm going to send somebody just like me. Why would, how could Jesus make this statement? The works that I do, even greater works than these shall you do. Watch, because I go to the Father. And He said, because when I go to the Father, and it's necessary for me to go to the Father, because when I go to the Father, and if I don't go to the Father, I can't send you the Holy Ghost. So what He's saying is, you're going to do greater things that I've done, because I'm going to go see, see Jesus. Watch this now, I've got to be careful. This. Jesus is not really in our heart, it's the Holy Ghost. The Bible says Jesus is seated on the right hand of God the Father. It's the Holy Spirit, one just like Him, part of the Trinity. Listen, it's not God the Father's right here, then the Son's right here, then the Holy Ghost is number three. No, no, no. It's like this right here. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. They're all three God. They're all three part of the Trinity. They're three in one. Much like our physical body is spirit, soul, and body, yet one person. These different gifts of the Spirit, the gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of prophecy, the gift of faith, the gift of working miracles, the gifts of healing, the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of word of wisdom, the gift of prophecy, the gift of discerning of Spirit. These nine gifts of the Spirit. And it's when you read that, if you read it, you're looking at, well, this person's got this gift. But really, literally what I believe it's speaking to, because in the context, historically, of the Corinthian church, they were some wild folk. They were wilder than y'all are. Because when they would come together, they would just shun down my Hyundai for about three or four hours. I'm speaking historically. When they would come together, they were just so caught up in the gifts of the Spirit and the gifts of tongues and their prayer language, they would just come together and pray in the Holy Ghost. Paul had to give instruction and bring clarity to that. And here he's saying, one's given this gift, one's given that gift. What I believe he's saying is when one prophesies, we don't need everybody prophesying. He gives later instruction to that. He said in in 1 Corinthians 14, If one's prophesying, let let the other one that has the prophetic word be silent. Why? Let everything be done decently in order that the church may be edified. Can you prophesy? Yes, you can. Can you speak in tongues? Yes, you can. Can you flow with the gift of faith? Yes, you can. Can you flow with the word of knowledge? Yes, you can. Why? Because the Holy Ghost moved in you. Everything of Him and about Him moved on the inside of you. One of the most powerful things you can have when you're meeting somebody in the street is a word of knowledge. You start telling them about their life and they know that you don't know who they are and you're getting right up in their bedroom about stuff nobody else knows about. It opens their eyes up and you can see the power of God reach out and touch them because they know that God has revealed it, not man. The gifts of the Spirit came with the Holy Ghost. One of those gifts is, of course, the gift of tongues, probably one of the most misunderstood gifts because it's been taken out of context in different, different groups and segments of the body of Christ. And I'm not against any part of the body. 
Every part of the body has its place. Can you say amen? Somebody's born again. It doesn't matter if they see clearly or agree 100% theologically. They're still part of the body. We're to love them and respect them. It's a good place to say amen right there. But nonetheless, how many know when you've experienced something, it doesn't matter how many, how many people try to line up and tell you it's not for today or you're not supposed to do that when God's already done dropped it on you or you've experienced it. But the gift of tongues is probably one of the most misunderstood gifts. I believe that's one of the reasons that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul tagged down and wrote down the whole chapter, First, cha- uh, first Corinthians chapter 14. That whole chapter deals with that one specific gift. I believe oftentimes that gift is the doorway to the other gifts. We could, talk, we could do a whole service on that alone. I'm going to spend a lot of time there. But, but I will say several things about it. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, first person I ever heard speak in tongues was me. And when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, I've used my prayer language. Everybody say your prayer language. King James Version says it like this when it's talking about 1 Corinthians 12, the nine gifts of the Spirit. It calls the gift of tongues, it calls it this, diverse kinds of tongues. Which means various kinds. Some translations say various kinds. In the little Greek, it means various functions or various kinds of tongues. There's a tongue, when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, we receive our prayer language. There's a tongue that's used in a corporate setting where somebody gets up and give, gives a message in tongues. And somebody else stands up or somebody else speaks out and gives an interpretation. Doesn't mean that they understood Spanish and the brother was speaking Spanish. No, it meant that they got the download from heaven to bring it out in a language we could understand so we could be edified. That's the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. I can pray in the Spirit as I will. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, I will pray with the understanding and with the Spirit also. I will pray with the Spirit. I mean, I will sing with the Spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. That means we can operate in our prayer language at will. Thank you, Father. I give you glory, honor, and praise. I can sing in the Spirit and sing with the with a, with a English, with a known language. It is a gift God's given. The book of Jude, only one chapter, verse 20 says, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you are building yourself up of your most holy faith. It builds you up. If you're feeling down and discouraged, you need a prayer language. When I was surrounded by bandits in the jungles of Suriname, South America, and they were looking to kill us, and I later learned they were going to throw us to piranha, I thank God my wife knew how to pray in tongues. Even though she didn't know anything that was going on at the time, all she knew was the Spirit of God prompted her to pray, not knowing how to pray. She wakes up in the middle of the night and starts praying in tongues. Prays for an hour in tongues till God gives her a release. And to make a long story short, those river bandits within a few hundred yards of us, all of a sudden there was a great downpour that came down that caused them to abort their mission. They would have probably killed us. I thank God for my prayer language. I'm not ashamed of the gift of tongues. I'm not ashamed to pray in the Holy Ghost. It is in the Bible. The gifts. This is the last thing. My time's out. Let me give me a few more minutes. When the Holy Ghost moved in, He moved in with the gifts. The gifts are in you, but you've got to learn to activate and operate in them. How do you do it? It's like riding a bicycle. The more you use it, the more you're going to get comfortable in it. Well, Pastor, bring me a microphone. No, you learn to prophesy at BP first. I feel the Holy Ghost run right there. If you can't prophesy at Walmart, don't come up here and want to get a... No, uh -uh, uh -uh, no, you ain't getting this microphone. I want to see what you're doing on the street first. (laughs) <laughs> Get back over here. All right, here's another thing that moved in. And this is kind of a platform that I'm going to be ministering when we get back on this series. That awesome series I feel like God's put in my spirit. It's revelation to me. Just God speaking some stuff to me. But here's the last thing, the fourth thing. In closing. Everybody say in closing. Touch your neighbor's I don't know if he really is closing, but... <laughs> I am, I am. I got I, Everybody else is doing good. I got to do my part. Here's another thing. The gifts of the Spirit, the presence of God, the power of God moved in. This is the last thing. The fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you, temperance is in you. Patience is in you. Love is in you. Joy is in you. Long-suffering is in you. (laughs) You just got to flip the switch. (laughs) 
<laughs> you know, sometimes God will put people in your life just so you can flip the switch a long suffering. Sometimes God will put people in your life so you can flip the switch of patience. So you can flip the switch of temperance. Can I tell you, God will not judge us by the gifts, by the power, by even the experience of His presence. But can I, we're getting quiet right here in this Pentecostal church. Can I tell you where God's going to judge us? In the fruit. I've seen tongue-talking folk be mean. I'm telling you, I, I, give me a bad this bless God. Give me a, you know, give me a Lutheran somebody. But when the Holy Ghost moved in, He moved in with the fruit of the Spirit too. When He moved in, He brought everything with Him. Galatians chapter five. You can read it out. I got time to get into it, but He talks about the fruit of the Spirit. God wants the fruit of the Spirit, and, and it's not. I mean, there were tree. You know, we had a lot of peach trees around. You never saw a peach tree straining to produce a peach. And sometimes we try to produce fruit that we just need to yield to and allow to manifest in our lives. Oh, y'all pray for me. I need tempers. Y'all pray for me. I don't kill this person. Y'all pray for me. I need help. No, let love flow out of you. So you've got to know how to let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Spirit flow out of you. Let Him. See, what the world is looking for is not just people that say they go to church. The world is looking for people that are allowing the Holy Spirit to express Himself through their life. But the first thing you've got to understand, you've got the same measure of the Holy Ghost that everybody else has when you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You've got that same measure the power, the presence. The fruit of the Spirit is the most important. Love, joy, peace, temperance, meekness, faith. Against such, the nine fruits. Isn't it amazing? Nine. Nine gifts, nine fruits of the Spirit. When the Holy Ghost moved in, He brought everything with Him. Help me to believe that. Amen. Stand on your feet with me, if you will. And this is how I want to do this. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, you start playing something, Tim. Thank you, buddy. In Acts chapter 2, it says this. They began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. I believe there's some folks here today. God wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. You say, well, Pete, pastor of my church didn't teach that, nor did mine. I just encountered it. Then I had to get in the Bible and find out it was all in there. Let me know God will authenticate what He does. It'll be authenticated by the Word. Anything that's outside of the Word now, we can't, we can't, we can't stake a theological stake up and say that's God. But I can, when it lines up with the Word, you can say, yeah, that's God. But there's some of you here today, I know there's been appeal already for salvation. But maybe you're here today and maybe you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You never, never received your prayer language. Maybe you don't understand it. See, the Bible says when a man prays in an unknown tongue, his understanding is unfruitful. He knows not what he says. That kind of blows the theology out. It's somebody supposed to understand and interpret and all of that. Now, I understand there one another one of the diver kinds of tongues is when someone speaks in a different language. I was in a Latin American country. I don't remember. I think it was Guatemala. And I was just got into this praise. I was up preaching. Just felt a, felt an impression. Just began to praise God in tongues. And they told me after the services, said, "Do you know you were speaking Spanish?" That wasn't me. That was the Holy Ghost. Because I don't know. Poquito Espanol. That's about all I know. A little bit of Spanish. And I probably didn't say that right. And that's one of the functions. But the primary function that you see the gift of tongues is your prayer language. When you don't know how to pray. When you need to be edified. Can I tell you, there'll be times you can't get an elder on the phone. You can't get your sister, your prayer partner, or your, your brother. You can't get mama. You can't get daddy. There's sometimes you have to edify and build yourself up. It's through your prayer language. And I want to invite you to come down. We're going to lay hands on you. You can see in Acts chapter 8, you can read it. Samaria had received the Word of God. They had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They had been born again, but they had not yet received the Holy Ghost. There's people in charismatic churches, people here. 
You've been born again, but you've not received the Holy Ghost. He's the package deal. He wants to give you everything. He wants to manifest Himself through you. When we close out, I'm going to close in a prayer. We're going to release everybody. If you're here and you say, i got faith, I'm going to believe God. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to come up here and we're going to lay hands on you. We're going to pray for you. Everybody else, you'll be free to go after we pray. We just want those that are coming up to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going to lay hands on you. What greater day to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit than Pentecost Sunday? Come on, He wants to come on the inside of you. He wants to indwell you. He wants to fill you. He wants to baptize you. I love what Ephesians 5 and 18 says, Be ye not filled with wine which is in excess, but be filled. I think the Amplified says like that, Keep being filled and filled and filled. Something along those. Keeping being filled with the Holy Spirit. So if you need the baptism, won't you come and just make a line? I'm just going to ask you to do that right now. If you say, Pastor, I want my prayer language. I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I want everything God has for me. If you've not been baptized, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. The Spirit of God's dealt with you. You say, I want the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You never spoke in tongues. You say, I want to receive. I want you to slip out and come right now. Just line up right here. Face me right here. We're going to pray for you. Just begin to slip out. Thank you. Just make a straight line. Wayne, if you can come up here for me and just keep them in a straight line right there, my brother. Appreciate that. Glory to God. Now, don't you just lift your hands up and face me, okay? Praise God. 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 Anybody else wants to get in on this prayer? Just come. Just keep making a straight line. We're going to go right down through here and lay hands on you. You're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody else? Anybody else wants you to come? Well, this is what we're going to do, okay? We're going to close in prayer. I'm going to give them some instruction right up front. We're going to close in prayer. Those of you that want to stay and just pray, I think it would be good to do that. If you feel free to go, you, no, no condemnation. You're free to go, okay? Right after we pray. But what we're going to do, I'm going to release you, pray over you, I'm going to release you, and then I'm going to give you guys some instruction. And then we're going to come through and lay hands on you. Our ministry team, we're going to come and lay hands on you. You're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Praise God. Father, we just thank You for the anointing of Your presence. Thank You, God, for the great Holy Ghost. Thank You for, Lord, Your love for us, that You wouldn't leave us comfortless, but You'd send the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. God, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You, God, that You choose to move in and bring everything with You, God. You choose, God, to fill us and baptize us. Totally immerse us in Your presence. Totally immerse us in Your Spirit. God, I thank You for Your power and Your presence going to come upon these people here. I thank You for this awesome body of believers, God. I thank You for what You're going to do throughout this week in their lives, Lord. For those, God, that have been filled with the Holy Spirit, maybe they haven't been active in their prayer language. Father, I pray You reactivate it right now in the name of Jesus. God, we speak blessings over this congregation. Thank You for all You've done and all You're going to continue to do. We give You glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You're released to go. If you want to stay and pray with these, I want you all to look at me right now. This is what the Word of God says. That they went and they laid hands on them in the book of Acts. When they laid hands on them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And what I want you to do, and we've already read it, Acts chapter 2, verse 8. Or Acts chapter 2. It says this. It says that they began to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so what we're going to do in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to lift your hands up and just begin to thank God for the Holy Ghost. Now, the Bible calls the Holy Spirit the